Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Please, quick, make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of these tests. And the question for today, Richard, what happens if I increase the displacement of my motor but keep the stock heads, cam, and intake manifold? Do those stock components limit the power gains I get from the added displacement? Well, there's only one way to find out. Quick, to the dyno. To properly answer the question of what happens when we increase the displacement with no other changes, if we just go up in the size of the motor, but keep the cam and the compression and the cylinder heads and the intake manifold, really the things that are kind of responsible for making power, what happens if we just make a bigger motor but run those same things? I really have two examples, and this first one is very easy. This is actually just stock LS motors, because lucky for me, a 4.8 and a 5.3 use the same cylinder heads, the same camshaft, the same intake manifold, and obviously we run the same headers and the same ECU and optimize the tune on both of them. And we've run lots and lots of stock versions since I go to the wrecking yard and grab these things all the time. So this is a good example of what happens when you have those same components, but just make a bigger motor. And the difference between the 4.8 and the 5.3 is stroke. They both share the same block. They sh share the same bore size on the piston. In fact, the pistons are interchangeable because the compression height is the same. The difference between the 4.8 and the 5.3 is in the crankshaft. I'll go ahead and put the strokes up here for you. 3.264 versus 3622. And then the 4.8 also has a longer connecting rod to allow use of the same size piston. But again, same truck manifold, same LM7 LR4 camshaft, same 862 or 706 head, and we run them on the dyno in the same way. So run in this manner with a Holly HP management system and optimize. We ran a Mazir electric water pump on this thing. R48 produces 300 or produced 333 horsepower and 343 foot pounds of torque. So a little bit more torque than horsepower, but you can see this thing made peak power out at 5400 RPM. Peak torque occurred at 343. 343 was both the same at 47 and 4,800 RPM. And we ran this thing all the way out to 65, although you can see it definitely is falling off. It's on the downward side of the power curve, revving it out that high, but it's a 4.8 and you can rev them that high. In fact, you can rev any LS that high. Let's overlay this now and we'll compare this to a 5.3 that is basically bigger, but with all the same components. Now, what we see is something that's going to be, <laughs> we're going to see the same thing when we take a look at the um, at the small block forward comparison between a 302 and a 347 run with the same components. But what we're seeing here is the bigger motor makes a lot more torque, basically a lot more power. In this case, it made more power everywhere, all the way up to 62 or 6300. And what's happening, and to a lesser extent on this motor than on the Ford, which is saddled by those E7TE heads we'll take a look at. But the mild cam timing, long runner length, stock cylinder head um, are more limiting on the bigger 5.3. And we would see this even more so on a 6 liter. But the cam timing, the truck manifold, and the heads are limiting a little bit more limiting on the uh, 5.3 than they are on the 4.8. And this is a pretty good example of... Our 5.3 made peak power at just 5,200. Let's see. Yeah, 5,200. So it's making peak power earlier, and it made peak torque earlier, too, at uh, 484 foot-pounds at 4,400 RPM, bigger motor, making power earlier than the, than the smaller motor, despite the fact that they shared the same intake manifold and cylinder heads and camshaft. And this is kind of what we see, because as we go up in RPM, a lot of times the stock components will become more restrictive on the bigger motor. Now let's check out and see what happened when we did the same kind of test on a 5 liter Ford. Now that we've taken a look at the difference between the 4.8 and the larger 5.3 liter run with the same heads, cam, and intake manifold, we can see what's happening on the 5 liter Ford side, and we're going to see a very similar thing. What I did was run a 302. I ran a 302 with the stock HO camshaft, the stock E7TE heads. The heads had springs in them, but just because we were later on going to do a K2 
cam swap and upgrade the camshaft. We put a set of GT40, uh, a GT40 intake manifold on there. And the reason I also ran it with a stock HO intake manifold and the GT40 was worth 15 or so uh, or more horsepower. But when I ran the 347, which we're going to compare this to, I ran it with a GT40 intake manifold. I didn't run that with a stock HO manifold. So I want to compare them, you know, same, same kind of deal. But this was a flat top piston with valve reliefs, the stock HO intake or the stock HO camshaft, the stock HO E7TE heads, a GT40 intake manifold, the 65 millimeter throttle body, long tube headers, and we ran it with a Holly HP management system and then a, a, an MSD, you know, distributor. Basically stock, uh, uh, camshaft and stock cylinder heads, but a GT40 intake manifold, and run in this manner, our 302 produced 278.5 horsepower out here at 5300 RPM, and peak torque checked in at 323 foot-pounds at 3900 RPM, you know, mild cam, although the camshaft in the 5 liter is fairly decent, but the stock cylinder heads obviously, you know, kind of holding this thing back and the GT40 stuff helped it out a little bit because the factory HO stuff makes power even earlier than the GT40 does. But let's take a look now at our 347. So what I did was run the 347 with the same components, same GT40 intake manifold, the same throttle body, the same E7TE heads. And in fact, they were the exact same heads because we had taken them off of the 302 and set them up on the shelf uh, because we had upgraded the heads on the 302, uh, you know, after doing the cam swap and stuff. And so we ran the same heads, the same intake manifold, the same camshaft. We had pulled the stock camshaft out of this 302 again, set it up on the shelf because we were going to use it again, put that camshaft back in this 347. And what I did, and I'll be doing another video on this on the 347 to show you what happens. And we're going to do a comparison between bolt-ons versus boost and see <laughs> which one of those is worth more power or the equivalent power. Like how much bolt-ons would you have to add to your combination um, in exchange for just running, you know, seven or eight or ten pounds of boost. So that would be a cool video as well. But while we were doing this, I ran this 347 with the stock components, so the stock head, stock camshaft, and the GT40 intake manifold. Same as the 302. We ran it with long tube headers, and although I didn't run this down nearly as low as we did um, on the stock 302, I wish that I would have, but we were actually looking more for, because we did modifications on the 347 and had it make a lot more power, so we weren't too worried about the 2000 to 2500 stuff. But we can see adding the 347, adding that kind of displacement compared to the 302, did the same thing as it did when we were comparing the 448 and the 5.3 there. It basically just made a lot more torque. It made more power everywhere. But as we see at the top of the RPM range, and had we revved this out even further, we see that they kind of would have converged. Even more so on this 5 liter application, the 5 liter versus the 347, the stock E7TE heads primarily would be the limiting factor. I mean, they only flow 100 and 60-ish or so CFM. So <laughs> even if we were managing to make two horsepower per CFM, which is difficult because we don't have the rest of the stuff to support that, even if we were doing that, you can see that we're limiting the, the power output and even more so on the bigger motor because it needs more airflow, but we're restricting the bigger motor even more with those stock E7TE heads. The 5 liter cam is actually pretty good. Um, not great. Not, not what obviously the Extreme Energy 274 cam, which we eventually run in both of these would do. Um, or any sort of other aftermarket cam for the 347. We could put something even bigger in this. But it just goes to show you that the factory stuff, the factory's cylinder head, camshaft, intake manifold are even more limiting on the bigger motor. So you will get gains in low speed torques if you're wanting to put something together for a truck application and you're only running to 5000 RPM. A big motor with all the rest of the stock stuff on it, pretty good idea. If you're trying to get a lot more power, don't saddle it with the other stock components. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little venture comparing the effect of displacement both on the LS engine family and on the 5-liter Ford? Well, we saw similar results from both engine families, and honestly, we would see this on most combinations. Now, there were subtle differences between the two combinations. Let's take a look at the LS first. We ran the 4.8 versus the 5.3 and run with the same heads, cam, and intake manifold on the LS. We saw that the 5.3-liter does indeed make more power than the 4.8. No big surprise there. But the interesting thing is, just like we 
we saw with the 5 liter Ford, those gains tend to taper toward the high side of the curve. At higher engine speeds, those things become more restrictive. Now, less so on the LS combination than on the 5 liter Ford, because let's face it, factory LS cylinder heads like the 706 or 862 heads that you'll find on a 4.8 and a 5.3 flow pretty well. And the intake manifold also, that truck intake manifold works very well, and we can make lots and lots of power with it. But the mild stock camshaft is really the thing that is holding both of those combinations back. If you put a camshaft in any of the LS motors, you're going to make a lot more power. So we saw the same kind of thing on the LS as we saw on the Ford. The 4.8 motor wanted to continue to make power at a little higher engine speed. The 5.3 made more more torque and more power through most of the curve, but the gains offered by the added displacement tend to fall off toward the top of the rev range. Now, if we jump over to the 5 liter, same story there, although more so, because the factory E7TE iron heads, very, very restrictive. Actually, the camshaft that's in the 5 liter motor is pretty good. Now, we ran a GT40 aftermarket intake manifold or stock, if you will, depending on what application you're looking at, but it was restrictive for both of those combinations. On the 5 liter Ford, it made more power at, at 306 cubic inches. It made peak power out a little bit further than the 347, and we saw a similar thing. We got lots more torque down low, but the gains offered by the added displacement taper off with engine speed, but only because we're restricting it with something else. Armature older, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, just like I said at the beginning. Come on, you remember, and I'll keep testing.